The implications for markets are pretty severe in, in our opinion. I guess uh, as we look forward into 2019, we can now discount any second type of fiscal stimulus that the Republicans would have bought uh, collectively. And we go back more into a gridlock scenario. You know, we've had this huge fiscal rush in the United States, which has obviously got the economy running very hot. That starts to subside pretty uh, naturally of its own steam into 2019 at a time where we're already seeing a lot of parts of the economy starting to cool. So for instance, US housing is already in decline, new house construction is in material decline, mortgage rates are moving up very quickly because of the Federal Reserve rate hiking cycle. But when we think about that rate hiking cycle, there's about a 12 to 15 month lag between the rate hike and, and that rate hike actually affecting the economy. So as we move through into 2019, all of the rate hikes that we've experienced this year start to filter into to the data set and will clearly tighten financial conditions. Now that comes at a time when uh, you know, global data is also quite weak in some of the lead velocity data that we follow. Some of the big exporters in Asia, now Taiwan, South Korea, China PMIs, these have all been in material decline and European data is pretty weak. So it looks like we've got this tightening coming in the United States uh, and the major implication is that because we're not going to have that second fiscal stimulus because the Democrats won't allow Trump to go on a spending spree to, to essentially buy votes and popularity, it's much more likely to lead to a more normalised credit cycle. And clearly when risk-free rates have been rising, that tends to, to bleed to a, a delayed response in credit markets. And it looks like we're not going to get a, a, a late cycle mark two, because when you go on a very big fiscal spend, clearly it keeps a lot of cash flow in the system coming off the, the sovereign balance sheet. Uh, that's not going to be the case. And so credit will have to stand on its own two feet into this higher rate environment and we're already starting to see some delinquency in that space. So that's the big one to watch for 2019. The central scenario for the, the markets looking forward is 2019 is the year of the final rate hikes from the Federal Reserve. 2020 or late 19, 2020, clearly there's an economic slowdown, potentially a recession. And then as we push through to 2021, there's probably a policy response. We could be in rate cutting mode or liquidity responses like we've seen previously. But there's no question that if the Federal Reserve continue to tighten interest rates, they will at some point over tighten. They have done in every other cycle. It's a very fine balance between trying to offset Trump's fiscal push, which is what they need to do, and build a firewall for that next cycle. Uh, and so with some of this lead data already leading down, and we know that the lag effect has a long time to come into the market, you know, th th there is a, a, a less rosy outlook as we head into 2019. Now we're already starting to see you know, this regime change in markets where we've got quite colossal volatility, I guess, as two equilibriums are starting to clash. And I think we can expect that to continue. I think, you know, equity markets have been uh, ripping around. Clearly, you know, we had a very poor October. They've had a great uh, response to the, the gridlock outlook. They like it when nothing happens in Washington. But I think, you know, what we can be sure of is that Trump's going to spend a lot of the next two years defending investigations from the Democrats who now have the power to table those investigations into his tax affairs, into the election with Russia, these types of things. Uh, and it's likely that he's going to get quite hostile in response. So he is a very volatile character. I think we can, we all know to expect the unexpected from Trump. Uh, and certainly that just brings more market volatility to the table.